Hello everyone, I am Shifa Saikalwala from Hactify Cyber Security. In this video, I am going to talk about a vulnerability that is insecure deserialization. Insecure deserialization according to OWASP 2017 was a vulnerability or a class of vulnerability itself used to lie on position 8 that is A8 of OWASP 2017. Now according to the updated OWASP that is OWASP 2021, it has been merged into software and data integrity failure. Again lies on the position 8 that is A8 of OWASP 2021 named as software and data integrity failures. Now, before going into insecure deserialization, I would like to let you know about the process of serialization and deserialization and why it is required so. Serialization is a process of converting the state of object or any complex data structure such as object into a byte stream. Whereas deserialization is a process of converting the byte stream that has been used into recreating an object. Serialization is used when the need arises to send your data over a network or stored in a file. By data, I mean objects, not a normal text. The problem is there in your network infrastructure and the hard disk or any hardware component that only understands bits and bytes but not any object. That is why we need to serialize and deserialize the objects. The main purpose of serialization and deserialization of object is because we need to save the state of object in order to be able to recreate it whenever it is required. Now, what is insecure deserialization? Insecure deserialization occurs when any user controlled data is been deserialized by any web application. This is the simple uh, definition of insecure deserialization. The user controlled data when serialized it can even replace the serialized object with completely different classes. Uh, this is where the vulnerability occurs. Insecure deserialization is also known as object injection. This enables the attacker to manipulate any serialized object and attacker can pass harmful data into the application code. So now how to identify that uh, the data has been serialized, the user pass data has been serialized. So in order to find out that whether the data has been serialized, you need to see or analyze the pass data into the website and try to identify that anything that looks like serialized data or no. This serialized data can be identified very easily if you know any of the programming language. For example, in PHP, PHP uses the most human readable string format so in order to understand it becomes very easy you can see onto your screen that how a object and the attribute looks like in php for example in php serialization format is mostly human readable string format which becomes very easy for us to understand with letters representations the data type and numbers representing the length of each entry you can understand from the example given below that is user is an object with two attributes name and is logged in this is how you can identify when this data is going to be serialized in an object maybe look something like this onto the screen the below object can be interpreted as follows o4 that is user 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 has four characters that is the reason we are using object four then we have two attributes that is the reason uh, this two is there as four that is any me name it has four characters or uh, string characters which is the attribute then we have s5 that is shifa shifa the value of the first attribute then we have is logged in that is s10 if you calculate is logged in uh, the spell of is logged in it's equal to 10 characters then we have b1 that stands for a boolean value true. This is how you can interpret this code. If you are doing white box testing and you have access to the code, then you can find out some methods such as serialize and deserialize in PHP. In Java, it is a bit difficult to find out, but still you can identify the serialized data. Java objects always begin with the same byte, which are encoded as 
AC and ED in hexadecimal and RO0 in base 64. You can also check out for some classes which implements the interface such as java.io.serializable can be serialized and deserialized. If you have access to the source code then it becomes super easy for you to identify whether the interface is been implemented or no. If you have access to the source code then you can also check for a method that is read object method which is used to read the deserialized data from any input stream in Java. Enough of talking now let's go into the practical to see how you can perform insecure deserialization. For this particular video I am going to use Portswigger Labs to show you the demonstration on insecure deserialization because Portswigger Academy has shown some amazing test cases scenarios for insecure deserialization vulnerability such as insecure deserialization can lead to privilege escalation insecure deserialization can lead to authentication bypass and so on so we are going to see in practical that how you can perform insecure deserialization and find out whether the object has been serialized or no uh, so let's go to the first lab and see how it works Okay, so I am on to the portswigger.net website into the section insecure deserialization. I am going to use this lab which is the very first lab to show you the demonstration of insecure deserialization. This lab is based on session mechanism which is vulnerable to privilege escalation as can be seen from here. As soon as I click on this lab you can also see that I have got some credentials to use. Uh, I am clicking on access this lab as soon as you click on it it is going to load and get you onto the second screen which is this uh, we like to shop and here you can see different uh, shopping cards and I will click on my account as you have seen that we have uh, the username and password the dummy username and password which you can use I am already logged in into my user as you can see from here and I have already solved this lab previously so it's saying congratulations on solving this lab but to show you again I am going to intercept the request turning on my burp which is already configured I am reloading this uh, page to get the request on my burp suit as you can see I got a request with the endpoint my account id equals winner now as you can see that I have also got the cookie uh, you can see on to the right hand side of the burp suit there is inspector so which you can turn on uh, you can just click on inspector and you'll see a window like this the window will show you the selected text the decoded form as well as the session cookie so the value that I have selected you can see from here and also it is smartly decoding the values that I have selected and you can see it's exactly the same format which we have seen previously so now what I am doing is as you can see b colon 0 which I am assuming is for admin accounts 0 I am assuming can be for normal user account so by changing the value from b0 to b1 will give me some admin access this is what the lab requires the privilege escalation so you can see from serialization that b0 can be a boolean value for a, a normal user and b1 can be a value for admin user. Now as soon as you click on apply change the selected value will automatically be changed to this changed uh, serialized object as can be seen. Now I am forwarding this request and I am gonna turn off the intercept to show you. As you can see I am able to see one more uh, tab onto my screen that is admin panel firstly it was not present as a normal user but now it is there when i have admin access now i'm going to turn on the intercept again and going to capture the request of this admin panel to see what happens now uh, let's go and click on the cookie again check out from the inspector about this cookie again change and get the admin access yourself click on apply change or forward the request again forward the request and turn off intercept so as you can see that we have got uh, the users the list of users which are there 
uh, from the admin panel. Now, as you can see, uh, there was a need to delete Carlos user, but uh, for now, I have this only user left because during testing, I deleted the first user. So now what I can do is I can delete this user and show you that how it works. So I captured the delete, I captured the delete request. Now I'm changing the username for you that is Carlos. Now again, I need to become the admin. I'll apply changes, forward the request, turn off intercept and you can see that uh, the user has been deleted and this lab has been solved. There is one more way of doing uh, the inspector thing to find out the cookie. So now what you can do is, I'll just show you by capturing the request once again. I'll just uh, go turn on intercept, capture this uh, my account request. And here you can see that I am just sending this to repeater so that I do not miss this request. And here you can see this cookie, this session cookie. I'll just select this. Uh, I don't want to do it from inspector this time. So instead what you can do is you can just send it to decoder and you can do it manually. Uh, now we can click on smart decode. It is going to select the decode option automatically or you can do it yourself by selecting decode as URL. And now again we are going to do one more time decoding that is base 64. And this is how I again got the very same serialized object which I have seen previously with the help of inspector. So now this object can be modified and we can again encode it uh, in the very same way base 64 and URL and this is how we are going to get the cookie and that cookie we can copy and paste it over there. So to avoid this manual method we have a smart option that is using the inspector element and that way we'll be able to do it uh, quickly. So I hope you understood this, that how to solve this particular lab from Port Swigger. I have just copy pasted the particular object which we have seen into the request of burp suit over here. I hope you now know that O4 is for object 4 that is user. We have two for two attributes one is username and second is is admin uh, then we have two values carlos and b1 so this is what my values are b stands for boolean s stands for strings so i hope you are able to completely understand this object now as you can see from the piece of code it says user equals unserialize unserialize the cookie the cookie which we have modified with the help of burp suit and we have changed the boolean value from 0 to 1. So now in the second line it is checking whether is admin equals true. Is admin is the attribute which is values is boolean and we have changed the boolean value to 1 which is equal to true. So this is where the comparison is going to happen and we will get the admin interface access with the help of this code. I hope you understood this. So now I hope that you are able to understand about insecure deserialization that how a particular object when modified can lead to privilege escalation. Uh, thank you so much for taking out time to watch this video till the end. I am going to make more videos on the same topic shortly. Thank you so 